Well, good morning. Uh, good morning. Welcome to St. John's. Welcome to this online service. A special welcome to you if you're joining us for the very first time. My name is Eddie Scracefield. I'm the vicar uh, here at St. John's. And during this service, we're going to be joined by different members of the St. John's team who've been putting these services together. We're continuing and looking at the book of Mark, which is from the New Testament, the second half of the Bible. And we look forward to Andrew coming to later and speaking to us. Well, maybe you are new or you've only been familiar with St. John's for a short while. What is St. John's Church all about? Well, our vision here is to grow the church and deepen our commitment to Jesus Christ. That's what we're about here at St. John's. We're about making disciples and growing as disciples. We want to grow. As I think about growing, um, it, it's made me think how we've had to change our approach, particularly in this time of, of lockdown and everything that's been going on over the last few months. But as we've changed our approach, um, we must remember at the same time that it is God who is the one who gives the growth. God is the one in charge. Just as Paul says in one of his letters to the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, he says this, I, Paul, planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. It's God who makes the church grow. It's God that makes our faith grow. So with that focus, let us just begin our service with a, a word of prayer. Let me begin in prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for this new day. And we thank you for drawing us together, even in this virtual way. And we pray that as we uh, go through this service, you will indeed help us to grow in our faith. We pray that you'll be at work in us and through us. That you'll help us to remember that it is you that brings about the growth in us. Help us, we pray today, to be listening to your word. And we pray by your spirit that you will lead us as we seek to grow as a church. For what we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to now have our opening song, so I'm going to hand over to Liam, um, who's going to lead us. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Saviour on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, trampled death, 
Where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face who oh, praise the name of the Lord our God, who oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Well, thanks very much, Liam, for leading us there. Well, we're now going to have our time of uh, confession. And for this, um, you may need your service card or you'll find that the prayer will be on the screen in front of you. And we're going to join together in saying prayer 2A, 2A. But before um, we say that together, listen to these words from Mark chapter 12. One of the um, religious leaders came um, to Jesus and uh, asked him, asked Jesus, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Seems like a really good question to ask, doesn't it? Well, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So there it is, loving God and loving our neighbour. And of course, when we think about it, we don't do those um, as we should. So let's just take a moment to pause and to reflect on the ways in which we don't love God and love our neighbour. And then we'll say the prayer together on the screen. So I invite you to join with me in saying the words of 2a. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this, God demonstrates his love for us in this. Why we were still sinners... Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God our Father, we thank you that Christ died for us to save us from our sin, to save us from turning away from you. Father, we thank you for what Jesus has done on the cross, dying for us in our place. 
May we know the reality of what he's done through his death and resurrection, that he's given us new life, eternal life, and he's given us a newness of life now. We pray that we would be your disciples and that we would be committed to a deeper relationship with your son Jesus, the one who has saved us. For we are asked in his precious name. Amen. Amen. It's good to know that when we confess our sins and that God is faithful and just and he will forgive us our sins because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It's brilliant news. It's good news. Well, I have um, now a few notices to um, give you or to mention. Um, on Wednesday last week, we had a, a great time with Mark Campbell from Word One to One, helping us think about how we can share our faith with friends and family by using the, the Bible. Maybe you missed um, out on that session. Well, Mark will be coming back probably in September, October time to do another session. So um, I recommend it. It was really good stuff and uh, I look forward to another opportunity later in the year. Alice and Tanashi um, have asked me to say a big thank you, a big thank you to everybody who contributed to the school's resource packs that went out locally. Um, so thank you for everybody who helped in that way. Now, we are um, moving towards that phase of uh, reopening the church for Sunday services. I know it's feel, felt like a really long time. It's a complex um, process, but I am pleased to say that we will be trialling this over uh, the weeks in August, and we will begin um, next Sunday evening with the 6pm um, service. And so I'll be sending further instructions and information about this so that you all know uh, what to expect, especially those who normally come in the evening service. So hopefully, as well, you've all received a survey uh, on Friday. This will help us and aid us as we make decisions, especially around the morning service, which is, of course, the much more complex one. There are two uh, parts to that survey. The first part is for, for everyone. Please do fill that in. The second part is very much centred around the children and youth and the, uh, the complexities around uh, their meeting and their usual Sunday activities. So please, please, please return that survey as soon as possible, and certainly by Wednesday this week, that would be really good. If you didn't get one, if you didn't get a survey, that's probably because you're not on our database. If you'd like to be on our database, um, please do go to the I'm New section on the church website. Go to the I'm New section on the St John's website and you'll find a form that you can fill in and return. So things are beginning to, to move um, as we reopen and please, please do pray into this because we really want to do it well, we really want to do it safely um, so we can move forward together. Pray that we come back together um, as a unified church looking to grow and to deepen our faith in Jesus. Now, two um, more exciting things to tell you about that are happening in August. The first is uh, a holiday club for children. And uh, Sophie's going to produce a little promotional video, which you'll see in a moment. And the second thing is our holiday at home for senior members of the church. And uh, we're also going to see a little promotional video of that as well from Sue and Nigel. So two little uh, videos for us to watch. Um, exciting stuff happening through August. And after that, we'll move into our next song. Hey kids, lockdown got you down? Getting bored at home? We'll say not today to COVID and come join us for St John's Holiday Club. We will be premiering three Holiday Club episodes to YouTube on the 10th, 11th and 12th of August. There will be a mix of things happening. We will have craft, science experiment, baking, games, song, drama and Bible stories. 
We will even provide you with activity packs, which will have everything you need in them to join us for some summer fun. St John's Holiday Club, happening over the 10th, 11th and 12th of August. Scan the QR code here or click the link below to register your interest. We hope to see you there. Sending us his own son, Jesus died for us. God showed us his love when Jesus died for us. While we were his enemies, God showed us his love. How do we know what? Love is God showed us his love by sending us his own son Jesus died for us God showed us his love when Jesus died for us while we were his enemies God showed us his love showed us his love by sending us his own son Jesus died for us God showed us his love when Jesus died for us while we were his enemies God showed us his love God showed us his love when Jesus died for us while we were his enemies showed us his love God showed us his love God showed us his love Let's pray together Heavenly Father we thank you for your love we thank you for the way you have saved us Heavenly Father we thank you for the way you walk with us we thank you for your constant forgiveness and grace. We thank you that we can reach out to you as our creator and live a life in true communion with you. We love you, Father, and we pray that we would draw ever closer <laughs> to you. Heavenly Father, we've got such a gospel to share. We have such good news to share with people. And we praise you, Lord God, that we have the opportunity as a church family to do that. We praise you for a brilliant week um, with our outreach and evangelism team as we have had the opportunity to explore how we can use your word to share your love with those around us. Thank you for the online meeting on Wednesday evening. Thank you that 40 people were able to attend against all the odds of it being summer and people being away on a holiday and um, people just generally coping with the situation that we're in as a nation at the moment. Lord God, we, we praise you that there are still so many people that are interested and eager and willing to share your word and we pray that those people would be able to do that and would feel equipped um, by what they learned on Wednesday evening. And Lord God, with that as well, thank you for the opportunity to share so tangibly how much you love our community um, with everything Alice has been doing, taking the packs to the schools recently to show the schools that, that St John's, that Jesus, that God loves them, supports them and is for them and is with them as they educate our children. Lord God, we praise you for that link and we, we ask that you would bless that and that you would show us more ways to serve 
and, and show your love in that tangible way, Father. And Lord God, again, we just thank you that we have this opportunity to share your word. We pray that we would take hold of it, Father. Thank you for the wonder of what we have, what we have in our lives. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you that we are forgiven, that you are good and that you are gracious. Lord God, we pray for Holiday Club and the preparations coming up there. It's online this year, Father, and that's new for us. And we, we lean on you, Father, the God who knew that we were going to do Holiday Club online this year, way before we ever did. Lord God, you have your plan and we rest on you. We rest on your wisdom. And we ask for um, wisdom to be imparted to everyone who's involved. Um, that people would be creative and, and dig deep and find ways to bring real energy and relatability to what it is that we're doing and that the children and the parents would, would be fully engaged and learn. And I pray for those parents that are going to have to be switched on to this in a way that a holiday club isn't usually. Normally it's a drop your children off thing but it's going to be more parent intensive and I pray that as parents and children together experience your word that they will be drawn closer by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord God with the pandemic that is um, still going on we pray for the people that have been shielding where restrictions have been um, lifted and are going to lift for them we pray for wisdom protection um, we pray that um, they would stay safe and that this would work we pray that as a nation we would continue to care for those who need it most and father we pray for all those people that during this time of um, real thinking and questioning on a cultural society level about what we're really about and as people consider questions like what kind of life do we want to return to when the dust settles from, from this storm we've all been going through where your gospel is broken through in people's hearts Lord God we pray that people wouldn't forget that they wouldn't just move on and melt back into life but that they would remember that they've been spoken to that they've been prompted by the Holy Spirit Lord God and so we pray for your kingdom to come. We pray for your salvation to come. And in so doing, we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 9 verses 42 to 50. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone was hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. 
The overall theme for this morning is, are we willing to see as God sees and treat sin seriously? Are we willing to see as God sees and treat sin seriously? There's also a theme at the beginning of this passage of Jesus helping or using children to make a point to the adults, running through from the previous chapters into the first verse of our reading this morning. And in fact, if you read on into the next chapter 10, it comes up again. As Louis said last week, children in Jesus' time were not regarded in the same way we tend to regard children in our culture today. Children had a very low status and no prestige in Jesus' time. Then we ca- when we come to another mention of a child in the first verse of our reading. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. Here Jesus is using the picture of children, little ones, as a description of people who believe in Jesus and try and follow him. He sees those of us this morning who try and follow Jesus as little ones, children. Eddie recently, in one of his talks, painted a picture of us being like little children compared to God's vast love and intellect and power. Now, we don't really understand the way God operates or thinks as as it's beyond us. But fortunately, when we follow Jesus, God gives us his Holy Spirit to live in us and help us to understand the Bible and understand God a bit better. Clearly, the disciples often didn't understand what Jesus was telling them. And we can see this throughout Mark's biography of Jesus. The disciples then, and we now, need to learn the lesson that God sees things differently to us in his upside-down kingdom, where the poor people of low status are rich, and the rich poor, and where Jesus' followers are like little children, low in status and limited in understanding compared to God. Jesus says, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. And good parents protect their children, don't they? Good parents want the very best for their children, don't they? And Jesus uses this picture here as he is our heavenly parent God and he will protect us little ones, us children of God, so that if anyone puts stumbling blocks in our way, if anyone tries to harm us and exclude us from following Jesus, then they'll have to face our heavenly all-powerful Father who can easily deal with them in a most certain way. Now, I remember many years ago when I was young and I was being bullied by someone who lived round the corner from me. It made my life a misery for a while and I was scared. So eventually my parents decided to take action and they went with me to the home of the boy who was bullying and talked with him and his parents. The bullying then stopped and I'm always grateful to my parents for this. Some of Jesus' sayings were probably collected together here in these few verses when Mark wrote down probably Peter's recollections of Jesus. And the theme of stumbling continues here. Little children often stumble when they're learning to walk or run, don't they? We often want to reach out and try and stop them from falling and hurting themselves. So there are a couple of things to notice here. Jesus sees all of us disciples, followers of Jesus, like little children. People who are learning and developing, who need to be humble and trust him. We are not people who fully understand, who fully see God's ways. We get things wrong, like the disciples continually do in Mark's Gospel. So we need protecting from stumbling and falling, like children learning to walk and run. 
But the sad thing is that we can also be deceived and can cause ourselves to stumble too. So Jesus uses this picture of the body to help us understand our vulnerability to stumbling. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. Well, if you're thinking of mutilating your body after hearing this, please don't. Please don't. I don't think Jesus means this literally. But he wants us to see how serious he is being about where we go wrong and can stumble. He's saying, treat sin seriously. Deal with it. And that may be uncomfortable for us. The thought may make us feel afraid. It may have a cost like cutting our arm or foot off or plucking out our eye. So Jesus uses this picture maybe to point out that we, his little ones, need to be protected by him, but also need to protect ourselves and others from harm by treating sin seriously. By treating sin seriously. And really, sin is summed up in the reverse of the commandments we had in the confession that we, we thought about earlier. Sin is when we don't love God and we don't love our neighbour. Sin is when we don't love as Jesus showed us how to love so consistently in his words and actions. And we, we all know really we don't measure up to Jesus. He's so wonderful and loving and we don't match up to that consistent love. And this picture of the parts of the body can help us reflect on that. We think about our hands, we can make something beautiful or useful with our hands, as Jesus did as a carpenter and in his whole life. Or we can give a comforting hand on the, the shoulder of someone in distress. Or negatively, we can hit others. We can eat or drink too much. We can steer a vehicle dangerously and harm others with our hands. Or if we think about our foot, we can walk to help someone like the Good Samaritan in Jesus' story. Or we can walk past someone and not help them, like the religious people in that same story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus told. And if we think about our eye, we can praise God for the beauty of his creation around us when we look at it, or we can look around at what's around us and just see it as a source of making money or whatever environmental costs. We're not worried. We can look also at our wife or husband with love or we can look at another person's wife or husband with lust. Now if we do these things that are not what Jesus would do, then Jesus is saying to us, it's serious. He says we're in danger of disintegration, rotting pain, it's better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, Gehenna, he says, where the fire never goes out. It's better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell, Gehenna. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, Gehenna, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. So why have I been saying hell followed by Gehenna? Well, the word used in the original text is not hell, but is Gehenna. And Gehenna is based on the word Hinnom, which is a valley outside Jerusalem, which sadly had an evil past with child sacrifice practiced there. And the Valley of Hinnom then became a rubbish dump for Jerusalem, where the rubbish from Jerusalem was thrown out, burned, and worms ate the rubbish, which smoked and smouldered. So it became a symbol of hell for the Jews. It's a place of disintegration as the fire and the worms do their work. So Jesus is saying here, if we do things that are not what Jesus would do, then he's saying to us, it's serious. And he says we're in danger of 
disintegration, rotting and pain like Gehenna, the rubbish dump. We only have to look at war zones. If we look at broken relationships that are all too common, we can see that disintegration and pain are involved. And hell sadly starts in this life and Jesus wants, warns us away from it and encourages us to follow him and his way. He encourages us to seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus, the loving servant king of kings. So are we willing to see that God sees and treat sin seriously? Now I just want to focus now on something that's probably mainly to do with our eyes causing us to stumble. It's to do with how we see other people. And I think it's a, a good example when we're looking at this passage. And I want to use Peter. Remember, it's probably his memories of his time with Jesus, which are contained here in Mark. And I want to use Peter as an example of how eyes caused him to stumble. And don't always see clearly. And in this instance, it's to do with the issue of racism, which is very current at the moment. And this is based on a reflection I gave the PCC, the Church Council, recently. And when I gave this reflection, I realised I've never talked in church about racism before. Or I think I may have mentioned it a couple of times in sermons over the 37 years I've been coming to St John's. But it occurred to me that this is very strange. Why have we never talked about racism before? Why have we never talked about racism in a more purposeful way over the years? For many of our congregation, this is a daily issue and we haven't really focused on it. It's a serious issue that can easily cause us and others to stumble. And I want to focus, as I said, on Peter. Peter, who was Jesus chose to lead the first church in Jerusalem, was a Jew and his racism against people who weren't Jews can reveal much to us today. Now, George Floyd's murder in America still shocks us, and recently a black woman in Wales had a swastika daubed on her garage. She decided to leave it there to remind people of the importance of the issue of Black Lives Matter. Now, the Bible, Scripture, is an incredibly honest collection of God-breathed writings, and it does not clean off the graffiti, so to speak, either. It leaves the faults and weaknesses of God's followers and others to be clearly seen. So let's look at Peter. He sometimes couldn't see what God was doing. He couldn't always see the lessons God was teaching him. And if you remember, on the day of Pentecost, Peter saw 3,000 men plus women and children converted. They became Jesus' followers on the day of Pentecost. Fantastic! And they were from many nations. They were from many nations. But Peter still has not quite seen the extent of God's love for all people from all nations, not just the Jews. He can't see. Everyone is invited to follow Jesus, even though all these people become Christians from all over the world in front of his eyes. Because if we jump forward to Acts 10, we find that because Peter didn't see clearly, this caused him to stumble because he continued as before, only mixing with Jews, not Gentiles. That's everyone else, probably most of us here today. Peter stumbled back into his old, comfortable ways. Do we ever do that? Is that us? So God took action. He sent him a vision. And in Acts 10, we read, God sends Peter an invitation via a Roman, non-Jew, called Cornelius, who wants Peter to come to his house. And God gives Peter a vision to convince him to go and mix with non-Jews and eat their non-Jewish food. So Peter went up on the roof to pray. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. 
It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. So then Peter did go to Cornelius' house because what he saw. And when he got there, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You're well aware that it's against the law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. Then, brilliantly, the Gentiles responded to Peter's message about turning to Jesus. And then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptised with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. After this, Peter did mix with Gentiles, non-Jews. But later, sadly, he reverts back to his racist ways. He goes back to what is culturally comfortable for him. Because we read in Paul's letter to the Galatian church and see how Paul opposed Peter on this issue. In Galatians 1, Paul writes, When Peter came to Antioch, which is a very multicultural city like London, Paul says, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James from the Jerusalem church, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid. He was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. And then the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypo hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, you're a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? So here, Peter's stumbling back into his old habits of favouring the Jews over the non-Jews actually caused others to stumble too. It had a knock-on effect. And Paul writes about the attitude of God that God has towards everyone and how he wants to see everyone uh, in, in the kingdom. In Galatians 2, Paul writes, So in Christ Jesus... You're all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male and female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. So Paul says there is no division between Jew and Gentile. That's the truth of the gospel that God and Paul wanted Peter to understand. Paul felt Peter wanted to keep in with his PLUs, people like him. That was the Jews for him. He was overly influenced by them as he'd been brought up a Jew and he was afraid. Afraid of what they might think of him if he mixed with people who weren't Jews. Peter was more worried about what his PLUs thought, than those who were not PLUs, the Gentiles. And this worked against encouraging others to respond to the gospel. Maybe that's why I have never talked about racism in any depth in a service. Maybe I'm, a, I'm afraid it might create, create controversy. I don't want to upset anyone. I, I don't want to upset my PLUs, people like me. And it strikes me that scripture shows Peter stumbled when he didn't see clearly. But the encouragement for us is that despite Peter's stumbling and our stumbling, he still kept going. Because if you stumble, that doesn't mean you stop walking. And Peter didn't stop walking with Jesus through life. God walked through, worked through Peter in amazing ways to heal others 
and bring others to follow Jesus. So we should be careful not to stumble like Peter, who couldn't always see that Jesus welcomes all people from all nations, but we should also keep going like him too with Jesus. We can stumble and cause others uh, to stumble if we don't remember that what God teaches us and act on it, both in the area of racism and all other areas where we don't see, think and act like Jesus. And I think part of our problem, like Peter's, is that we're often comfortable with the way we've always thought and acted and seen things. So we can revert easily back to our unloving behaviour, forgetting God's way of love. We also might be afraid to stand out in the crowd of people like us if we do things God's way. So we blend in by adopting their attitudes rather than Jesus' way of love for God and neighbour. And if we want more and more people to come to faith and experience the love and justice of our King Jesus and his upside down kingdom, then I think we all need to reflect on what the Bible can teach us through this example of racism and not forget our cultural biases that affect us, like Peter, so strongly that we can revert back to them without seeing what we're doing. So are we willing to see as God sees and treat sin seriously? Because Jesus said sin is serious, we need to take strong action so we don't cause other little ones to stumble. Jesus said sin is serious so that we have to watch out that we're not, uh, we're not afraid to take personal action in our seeing and thinking, our feet and our hands, our doing. And in this last part of the reading, Jesus talks a lot about salt, which brings out the flavour in food as well as preserving it. Salt is distinctive. It's a very clear taste. It brings out the good flavours in food and helps stop it rotting. It's the opposite of the rubbish dump Gehenna really, isn't it? And and Jesus says elsewhere in Matthew 5.13, his followers are the salt of the earth. We're meant to add flavour to life. We're to be distinctive as followers of Jesus, remembering what he says and not being afraid to sometimes stand out in the crowd. Not go with the flow of the people we know, even though that might feel more comfortable for us. We will then be used by God to bring out and preserve what is good in society. We should be distinctive in seeing everyone is made in the image of God, our loving creator so that there's only one human race. There's only one human race. And therefore, as Paul says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus' final words in this section remind us, if we remember these things and are not afraid to be distinctive followers of Jesus, treating sin seriously, then peace will ensue. Have salt among yourselves, he says, and be at peace with each other. So, I'll say it again, are we willing to see as God sees and treat sin seriously? Let's pray. Let's reflect quietly on what God might want us to see this morning that might be causing us to stumble or others to stumble. It might be racism. It might be something else that God brings to our mind. And if you don't yet follow Jesus, then maybe use this silence to come to him and see what he says to you. Let's think in silence for a moment. Lord, we know we are like little children compared to you. We thank you that you care for us and protect us. Help us not to stumble or cause others to stumble. Help us to see things like you do and treat sin seriously. 
And if we don't yet follow you, Jesus, help us to trust, commit and turn to the God who loves all and who died and rose to take away our sin. Amen. When I fear my faith will fail Christ will hold me fast When the tempter would prevail He will hold me fast I could never keep my hold Through life's fearful path for my love is often cold He must hold me fast He will hold me fast He will hold me fast For my Saviour loves me so He will hold me fast Those he saves are his delight Christ will hold me fast Precious in his holy sight He will hold me fast He'll not let my soul be lost His promises shall last Bought by him at such a cost He will hold me fast He will hold me fast He will hold me fast For my Saviour loves me so He will hold me fast My life he bled and died Christ will hold me fast Justice has been satisfied He will hold me fast Raised with him to endless life He will hold me fast Till our faith is turned to sight When he comes at last He will hold me fast He will hold me fast For my Saviour loves me so He will hold me fast he will hold me fast He will hold me fast For my Saviour loves me so He will hold me fast For my Saviour loves me so He will hold me fast Well, we're now going to respond to God's word by saying a creed, which is an affirmation of faith. It's affirming our faith. It's affirming what we believe in. And to do this, we're going to use uh, 4C on the service cards. It'll also appear on the screen. 
And uh, I invite you to join with me in responding with the words in bold, which are, we believe and trust in him. We believe and trust in him. Because you see, um, our faith isn't just about um, believing that God exists. It's actually about trusting in him in him in our lives day by day as we go um, to work on Monday as we go about our lives at home and on holiday so I invite you to join with me in those parts in bold so do you believe and trust in God the Father source of all being and life the one for whom we exist we believe and trust in him do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church, this is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we've nearly come to the end of our service. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, don't forget, tonight um, there is a Zoom uh, service at six o'clock and uh, you can find information on the website about how to join that service tonight uh, as we continue in the Psalms, looking at um, Psalm uh, 21. If you have any um, pastoral concerns or anything you want to tell the church about, any question, please do get in touch via the pastoral hub. Um, the email is on the screen, or you can, of course, just telephone the office. Please do let us know um, about different things that are going on in your life and we'd love to hear from you and uh, seek to support you and pray for you as well. Um, there's a slight adjustment to the time that the church is going to be open. Um, it was 9.30 to 12.30 each morning um, during the week but it's now going to be 10 o'clock till 1 o'clock um, so please note that. Well, let's um, say a final prayer together, which is prayer 8a on the service cards. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lamp to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us and we really look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.